Good evening, everyone. I'm going to call this December 20th meeting of the Development Review Board to order. And uh, thank you all for coming out this evening. And I will turn it over first to Meredith to review the meeting procedures, particularly the remote meeting procedures for this unique situation we are in. Yes, Kevin. Uh, don't forget to introduce the members. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Do that first. Yeah. Yes. That, that's the so, order. I'm going to introduce members of the board, uh, starting on my right. Hi there, Catherine Burgess, DRB. Kevin O'Connell. Meredith Crandall, staff. Uh, and I'm Rob Goodwin, chair. And on the Zoom platform, we have. I'm Joe Kernan, DRB. Abby White, DRB. And Michael Azorchak, DRB. All righty. Thank you. Go ahead, Meredith. All righty. Um, so for everybody on Zoom, you're going to see a shared screen here. Uh, hold on one second. There we go. Um, and this is in part for anybody watching at home via Orca so that they can um, log in and attend if they want to. Um, and then also other people who might be attending via Zoom who aren't used to this setup yet. Um, so if you are watching this meeting via Orca, you can participate in tonight's Development Review Board meeting using the Zoom platform. You can just log in using this link, or you can call into the meeting using this phone number and meeting ID number. If you're trying to do so when you're having problems, please email me at mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. That email address is at the bottom of your screen. That will remain there while I go through the rest of these remote meeting procedures. Um, for those attending via Zoom, turning on your video is optional. For everyone that's attending, please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. This will reduce background noise. Um, if you're on the phone via Zoom, um, you can use star six on your phone to mute or unmute. Um, if you're on the Zoom platform, please use the chat function only for logistics or troubleshooting questions. Any um, questions or comments about content or actual items on the agenda, please raise your hand. Um, if you're on Zoom and we can see you physically, um, or you know, in a break, if you're on the phone, and you can also just state your name. Um, and we'll also, I, I know right now we just have Susan on via phone, so we'll check in with you, Susan, because we know what items you're going to want to talk on. Um, I'm going to skip over some of this stuff because we don't really have any just general members of the public. Everybody here is pretty much for an application um, or related to an application. Um, in the event that I get noticed that the public is unable to access this meeting, and that would be through my email, um, the meeting will need to be continued to a time and place certain. I'm going to hand this back over to Rob. Okay. So at this time, I will entertain a motion for approval of the agenda. I believe there's one uh, you know, change um, here. Um, so Kevin, do you have a motion? I will, I will make the motion to approve uh, the agenda for this evening with this modification. Item number seven, one North Franklin Street, and item number eight, 25 Cliff Street, be changed into reverse order so that Cliff Street is uh, addressed before the uh, Franklin Street uh, application. Okay, we have a motion by Kevin. Is there a second? I'll second. This is Joe. Second by Joe. Okay, so we will call the roll to vote. Uh, Kevin, how do you vote? Yes. Michael? Yes. Joe? Yes. Abby? Yes. Catherine? Yes. And Rob, myself votes yes. That appro is approved unanimously. Um, okay. So, um, yes, thank everyone for coming out tonight. Um, we have two items on the agenda. Um, the, the approval um, of well, the change here was just uh, to accommodate uh, uh somebody that could not make it this evening instrumental to the uh, cliff street application um and uh, i believe everyone has been informed of uh of this change uh, ahead of time um and so we'll very briefly uh take up the 25 cliff street oh. application oh, minutes, minutes first oh. sorry 
Yeah. I think you have it in your packet, but you can use mine. Um, no. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot about that part. Oh, I got it all up. I just don't have the minutes. That's the only thing I don't have. Okay. Um, so I will entertain a motion for approval of the minutes from the December 6th meeting. And those eligible to vote are myself. Yes? I think that was a cough. No. We have enough people for it? We do. Okay, yes. so you, Catherine, Joe, Abby, Abby. Michael. Yep. Yes. Yeah, you no, can't. Sorry. You can't oh, make, the make, the, make the motion. Yeah. The motion to I move. approve. Yeah. Make the motion to approve. When someone submits a second, I forgot I wasn't there. And well, we that's, a... you weren't there. Oh. Oh, I was there. Thought... Were you? Oh, you yeah. were. Sorry, yeah. my bad. Catherine I missed. There. For some reason, I missed that. I'm sorry. So Catherine has made a motion for the December six minutes approval. Um, is there a oh. second? I'll second. This is Joe. Joe, second from Joe. I'll uh, call the roll. So, Catherine, how do you vote? Yes. Joe, how do you vote? Yes. Abby? Yes. And Michael? Yes. And Rob, myself, votes yes. That is approved uh, unanimously. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, okay. So, at this time, we will move into the 25... Cliff Street uh, application uh, very uh, briefly. And um, I would entertain a motion uh, on this application. We gotta open I, I don't think I I don't think I said to them when we have to continue to. I haven't checked with them on the second date. Okay. So does the applicant have anything to uh, to you know say about this hearing? We have to continue this uh, because we do not have a staff person uh, available uh, to review it. Um, is there a date certain at which you can do it? It does not appear that we are going to be able to take this up at the next uh, DRB meeting. Um, so uh, is that is Arthur on and Diane, is it? Uh, Susan. Susan. Yeah. So can I, sorry, yeah. can I step in? Go ahead. <laughs> um, so I conferred with um, the staff, Michael Miller, for this, um, or I've, I've had an update on his situation. And um, the third January 3rd is is not going to work. Um, so the next possible date we'd be looking at is Tuesday, January 18th, this time, seven o'clock. Um, would that be doable for you, Susan? Yes. Okay. And Arthur, would that be doable for you? I believe so. I, it's going to take me a minute to actually be able to answer that. Yes, go, go ahead and take, take, a, take a look. Yeah, I should be able to make that. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So it's January 18th? Yep, Tuesday, January 18th, because the 17th is a holiday. Okay. All right. So I will entertain a motion to um, continue. to continue on uh, Tuesday, January 18th, the 25 Cliff Street application. I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Um, I'll second. Okay, we will have a second and a motion. Um, so we will call the roll. Kevin, how do you vote? Yes. Michael? Yes. Joe? Yes. Abby? Yes. Catherine? Yes. And Rob, myself votes yes. That is approved unanimously. Arthur, Susan, thank you for being on tonight. I appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, um, so our next uh, item on the agenda for this evening is the one North Franklin Street application. Now, first thing we need to do is everyone uh, that is planning on speaking on tonight's application. Um, we need to swear you in as witnesses. Um, so is there anybody on the Zoom platform that um, We'll be speaking on this application. No. 
Okay. Um, so all those interested in providing testimony on this application, would you raise your right hand and to be sworn in as a witness? Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury? Alrighty, thank you. Um, so if one of you- Or two, whoever yeah. is gonna be actually representing yeah. the application in general could come up and sit in front of the laptop and then make sure that microphone is right. close to you. Yep. You're, yeah. you're gonna give these, the- the uh, so overview yep yep overview. i can do yeah but just making sure that they're up there so they can respond yes. with the microphone yep yep i'll do still do the the overview for sure okay um would you would you just like to introduce yourself real quick and yes i'm my name is elaine watson i'm the president of the sawmill condo association at one north franklin uh, thank you very much feel free to pull that microphone as close to you as you want so that <laughs> it catches everything <laughs> Okay. Um, do you want me to just go ahead and say? Well, so we're going to have uh, Meredith School to give a little brief overview of the uh, application, and then we'll sort of yeah. you know let you give your um, okay. overview of you know, what I'll, you I submitted. I stick to mostly and, procedural stuff. Okay. Yeah. Um. So, uh, in this application, it's it's sort of a question about definitions. Um, what's on the site at the Sawmill Condos right now? Um, there's a garbage enclosure. And really, based on the way the terminology we have in our zoning regulations, the way I look at it is it's a fence for privacy to keep all the garbage in, um, you know, to, to contain that area. Um, and um, the condo association wants to put a roof on it, which makes perfect sense. But once you put a roof on it, it's really not a fence anymore. Um, fences are accessory structures that do not have setbacks that can be right up to a boundary. Um, other accessory structures under section 3003 have modified setbacks that are a little different from like big buildings, but they still have setbacks. They can't be right up to the boundary. Um, and this particular garbage enclosure is up against the front boundary line. Um, and for front boundary lines, it really doesn't matter um, what 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 structure it is. If it's not a fence, it really needs to meet um, the the ten foot front setback. Um, and so, I could have just had them apply for a permit and then denied it and had it come to the board on appeal, and that just seemed too silly. So it's just come right to the board to figure out if they can see a solution that I can't so that they can put a roof on this without having to move the whole thing back nine to ten feet from the front property boundary um the there is an option in here for a waiver but it's a 10 percent waiver to that front setback so that would only get them to nine feet um and right now it's at between three and four feet from the front property boundary um if you say the front property boundary is the back of the sidewalk so it's 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 a little complicated, but on the other hand, it's it's really, you know, how does the board feel about the situation and how do they see it under the regs? Can't we, can't we, oh, make sure you're by the microphone. Can't we uh, simply grant a, a, a variance or a waiver? Um, I mean, I think that I think that even if it's not explicitly in the in the ordinance, uh, it's certainly uh, implied and we can just so that would be so the waivers are much more specific since the 2018 regs so the waiver wouldn't work if the board felt that they could that this could meet all of the variance criteria um then maybe the board can see it where i can't well, well, right we but we have it's something the, to go through and we, look at right, for we sure need, we need to but do that I, that i didn't have them pay the extra money to apply for that variance yeah. because well, we I couldn't it. see it meeting the variance, yeah. but you guys can have them amend their application in the hearing if you want. <laughs> yeah. If you um, see it. Which, well, I think before we get, before. get too much, we'd love to, you know, hear yeah. from the applicant, you can present your application and okay. and we'll have some questions. Do you mind if I show you something? 
Wilson. Oh yeah, if you have additional pictures, feel free. Yeah, I took a picture today to show you what the situation is. I don't know the situation with the snow and ice. Yeah. yeah. So, and, so, right. We, we got to fix that. Yeah. So what we had, what we have is, in, does we built this as a, I call it a structured. Make structure. sure, make sure you're at the microphone, yes. otherwise the other board members so can't sorry. hear you. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, we built this. We, when I first became president, we had a dumpster in the middle of the parking lot, and it was really ugly. Yeah. <laughs> And um, I so I uh, suggested that we build a structure to, to, to contain the, gar the garbage containers. And um, so we did, and we didn't, I mean, I don't, I don't know if at that point we even knew we needed to get permission for that it just you got a permit <laughs> okay we did get a permit okay thank you we got a permit okay so um it it uh, the reason i took this it, it was good that today <laughs> we've had the snow and you can see what our situation is in the winter uh it's we have a, a elderly people that live there including me and um it it is dangerous in the winter. Yeah, that's that's really evident. Yeah. I mean, you know, with I'm I'm going off script here a little bit, and I apologize, but this is something that's near, this is something that's near and dear to my heart. Uh, you know, fall prevention is really important when when people yes. are aging. Um, it makes all the entire difference. I just hope we can find a solution here yeah. without too much hassle. Thank you. Um, so. That's where we, I, I did. Uh, we got letters of, of I, I went and talked to all the neighbors that were that were um, and they all support it. There's two letters uh, that Meredith included in the packet. Um, one is the condo association across the street. And the other one is our uh, the woman that lives on the corner of um, Cross Street and North Franklin Street. So she ab abuts our, uh, our property. Uh, I went and talked. She was concerned because she she shares a, there's a fence between her her place and, and ours, and so I went over and talked to her and told her exactly what it was about. And she said, "Oh, that's great, you know, no problem." And so she said, "I um, I support you totally." And so I said, "Well, would you write a letter?" So she did, and I also um, because I realized then that every all the neighbors had gotten. I talked to all the neighbors uh, that they'd gotten letters, and. Uh, the uh, Donna Bate, who is the uh, who lives in the condo across um, that looks out at this structure, um, also wrote a letter of support. And I think one of her one of her concerns is she's having to look at it. ugly. <laughs> if there's a roof there, it might be a little bit easier to look at. Um, so I don't see a downside except for the fact that there's a you know there there's this issue with the with the permit the rules are that i that, that we were actually we're actually trying to say can we get can we get approval to do this even though there are you know it, it could be construed to be not in compliance i guess is what i'm saying i'm just going to check to make sure abby joe and michael got my email yeah, um, Abby, Joe, Michael, I just want to make sure that you all got the email I sent with the um, letters that Elaine has been referencing. I circulated that earlier this afternoon. Okay. okay. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Um, so you have any? Do you have anything more you want to have backstory or anything like that? I. I uh, we have uh, Dan Wetmore is yep. the person that would. You can uh, go to the stand-up mic if you want. Dan is uh, is the person that would build the roof, mm -hmm. and so we asked him to be here. And thank you, Dan, for coming. Oh, sure. I just wanted to add one thing. Um, that is, I I was talking to you, Meredith, right? Probably. <laughs> Down in the basin. Over yeah. There. One of the issues that you brought up is that because it's so close to the sidewalk, the roof can't 
go past that side of it. So basically, if we project straight up along this side of it, that left side of the photo, then have it shed towards towards the driveway. Mm -hmm. And um, I just wanted to point out that that's that's the design. We don't have I don't have any sort of final design for this because I'm not sure we, we're ever sure it's going to happen. But but that's what we would do. We would have we'd have a shed towards go into our parking lot towards not, the parking lot they probably the lose one, they probably lose one parking space which is better than losing two or three and and building a big box somewhere else i just actually had a couple of questions questions maybe if you if you care Dan? <laughs> yeah i just sure. i don't know if you have a general um you know, idea of like how how tall the roof would be above the fence, uh, or just a generally conceptual idea of like you know what the construction would look like. One of the issues of this is that it was built as a it's 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 just built along the grade of the ground. Yeah. So that the different walls of the fence or the structure are all um, there they're parallel to each other but they have a, a they're not even across the top mm -hmm. if you know what i mean yep. yep so what i would have to do is i would essentially have to like sister on new posts that would that would travel up above this wall and then and then um whatever would be the normal whatever would be a decent height for a tall person on the right hand side would be the minimum height over here and then the the the, the top of the shed roof would, would would have to be high enough so that that works over there again i haven't designed it yet because mm -hmm. it wasn't quite sure what was going to happen and things got put off so but it would be a simple shed roof my idea is that it would be a simple shed roof that is essentially open in other words this fence here is the only fence that's there and then the rest of it there would, there would be some structure there would be some you know some lumber that's going up that there's a there'd be a frame that would be visible does that help yeah no, that does help so would this be like new posts like or extensions of the existing posts in there on the ground i would say it again would it be new posts or would you just be you know extending from the existing fence post Oh, I would need to, I would need to add, I would need, I would attach new posts side by side to the existing posts. I'm okay. not going to be digging down to, yeah. to found new posts and I can't just add a new post to the top. I have to create a, a vertical structure that will hold together. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a bit challenging. But it, it can be done. Yeah. Okay. Now, what what is, is it? Pay asphalt pavement under there or gravel or? Yes, asphalt. 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 Okay. I think that that's all I had. Thank you, Dan. Um, board members, have any other questions at this time? Um, not at this time. No. I actually have a quick question. Currently, the situation, I see this picture on the front of the uh, staff report. That's the existing situation out there um, with that's, that door on the front. So in the other picture, I saw a couple of dumpsters. Are there still dumpsters in there, large dumpsters no. that need to be picked up? No. No, there, there are big, there, what do I say? There, Rolling there, bins? They're bins, yeah. Okay, bins. all right. There's no now dumpsters. I understand. <laughs> The Joe, the picture in the staff report with dumpsters was to show what was there before the enclosure was put in place. Because I was going through the history, yeah, so that so was that pre, six years. yeah, pre application to even have the enclosure, right. and then they built the enclosure, and now we're talking about changing the enclosure. Okay, so the truck pulls up, the guy gets out, he pulls the bins out, they get loaded into the dump, the yes. garbage truck, yes. and then replaced. Okay, I understand. Thank you. So do you have any specificity or sort of guidance or requirements from the trash pickup company as to where this needs to be located or it I mean, they have not we've been using them 
uh, Casella for years and it, it works for them. Okay. Um, I'm sure it'll be a lot easier for them not have to go into what you're seeing starting for the winter, you know, uh, which they've done every year without complaint, surprisingly. <laughs> My, I think the reason we're bringing it up is because as we as we age and as we have more elderly people in our in our community, um, it, it's not it's just not safe. It's not safe it's under not any safe. circumstance. Uh, okay. Um, Kevin, uh, do you want do you want to jump in and take the lead on anything, or uh, should I just charge forward? No, I just go go ahead. I'll I'll back you up a hundred percent. Okay. <laughs> um, so I think as discussed with Meredith, I mean, there's a couple directions we could you know go with this. I mean, there's one where we could do a waiver, or you could request you know a waiver, and I think that you know if we went that route, the board might be willing to sort of amend the application for that request. You know, here. Um, hold on. So Sorry, the waiver or the variance? The waiver is the one where it has to be set back yes. at least nine feet. Yes. Okay. Yes. Make it sure. Um, and so as she, you know, explained, we're only allowed to grant a waiver, you know, ten percent. So it's a ten foot ten foot. I guess I don't understand that. So it's a ten foot setback. Um, we're allowed to basically reduce that to nine to nine feet under the waiver criteria. Um which, uh, you know, I don't know exactly how far this, you know, well, structure is, uh, you know, from the setback line or whatnot. Maybe that's something you guys have to figure out. But um, so that's a direction that we could we could go first um, is exploring that option. Um, okay, so that would mean they're moving the whole thing, probably. Because probably. It's because it's right now it's between three and four feet from the back of the sidewalk. Right. And that's what we are trying to avoid because of the prohibitive cost of doing that and right. um, losing more. And to my to my colleagues here, I, I would I, I just have to say, uh, I mean, I know that this is stretching the envelope or stretching the envelope a little bit, but you know, winter's coming, and you know, we have a bunch of elderly folks that have to get to the place to do their recycling. I don't think they can hear you. Yeah. Just make sure you're yeah, to, to do their recycling, and, and we can't have people falling down, breaking hips, and and uh, you know collarbones and such, which is what happens. So, um, so what I'm hearing from you is that you know if if you had a nine foot you know setback based on the information you have, your understanding, um, you know it, Meredith said that you know it's three to four feet from the you know the edge of edge, edge of sidewalk. Um, if you had to. Have that fence nine feet from the front property line or wherever that front setback um, falls. You would have to um, move. We the, would have to physically move it. Move yes. the whole thing and Which, at a prohibitive cost. Right. Right. And it, it can't just be moved. It would be a completely. It would be a and totally we, new construction. Yeah. Right. Right. Thank you. Okay. So if we had to move, make sure make sure you get the bike from pointing at you. This is Cynthia Goth here. If we had to move it, would we be able to have a parking space on the side where it is now? Oh, because otherwise we'd lose parking spaces and we we really don't have parking spaces enough as it is. Um, so I'm seeing a nod here from Meredith that uh, yeah. the parking spaces, there's as, no setback. So yeah, parking, parking space spaces could... can be right. Uh, I mean, they, you would still want that like two feet between the back of the you know, where you have your flower bed would probably still need to be there because DPW needs that room to pile the snow when they plow. Um, but uh, uh, parking spaces need to be eight and a half feet wide. So you would be able to shimmy a parking space in there, I think, as long as it fit in your measurements. Um, so so that's that is an option and a way that the board could approve this. But it would entail you having to move the whole thing, which wouldn't happen this winter because you'd have to dig in new supports, right? It would also be a whole new process, right? Uh, not we necessarily, as long as what was built was consistent with what the board approved, that that would be a possibility to get a permit to say, yes, you can do this, but you have to move the whole thing over, right? 
and then we would just need a final site plan from you here in our office, not visiting the board again. Um, that would be super expensive. Right, yeah. right, no, 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 and it, but this is, yeah. Yeah. just to step in on process here, yeah. it's important that the board goes through the different analyses in here on the record and gets information from you yeah. so that they can figure out how to make a decision, so. Uh -huh. I, I, I'm just trying to sort of weed out, figure out what direction we can go in because it doesn't appear that uh, us going through the um, the waiver process would really is benefit you um, if that would uh, result in you having to move the <laughs> uh, move the structure. So I think that we are, um, you know, moving on to you know, so maybe another avenue to explore here. Yeah. So I, I guess what we are asking permission to do is build a roof where it is right. that. That's our goal. Um, um, and, and so I guess the path forward, we would you know, have to explore the idea of some type of variance here. So Meredith, can you read us the variance criteria? <laughs> yep, not a problem. Um, all right, so uh, in figure 4-04, this is in section 4603 of um, the zoning regulations. Um, there are six general variance criteria that have to be met for the board to approve a variance. Um, and a couple of these I might paraphrase when I can skip some stuff that doesn't apply here. So first criteria, that there are unique physical circumstances or conditions, including irregular, irregularity, narrowness, or shallowness of partial size or shape, um, or other physical conditions peculiar to that particular property and the unnecessary hardship is due to these conditions and not the circumstances or conditions generally cre created by the bylaw and the neighborhood or district. Two, because of these physical circumstances or conditions, there is no possibility that the property can be developed in strict conformance with the provisions of the bylaw and that the authorization of a variance is therefore necessary to enable the reasonable use of the property. Three, unnecessary hardship has not been created by the applicant. Four, the variance, if authorized, shall not alter the essential character of the neighborhood or district in which the property is located, um, substantially or permanently impair the lawful use or development of adjacent property, reduce access to renewable energy resources, or be detrimental to the public welfare. And um, five, the applicant is proposing the least deviation possible from these regulations that shall afford relief. So there was five with one of them having subparts. Um, you know, I, I, do you have those up on your screen, Rob, so that you can? I, I can't, I don't know, logged into the Zoom, but. Oh, do you want me to show? Oh, no, no, I, I just didn't know if you had them up, but I, I can share up, yes. them. Give, give me a second and I can share them. Let me just pull them up on <clears throat> my thing so that the board members can see them. You guys, you can chat yep. while I'm pulling that. Um, so that was a lot of words. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> I had to get it in the record. <laughs> right. And, and so, I mean, uh, this is kind of where our where it makes such our job difficult. Yes, go ahead, Kevin. Well, I guess this is more a question to Meredith. Meredith, is, can we um, modify a um, the appellant's request to include a variant. That we've we've done this in the last three years, yeah. where okay. where um, the applicant has come before and the board basically goes through and gets rid of all the other options, but there's a variance that I, could I just, be done. We've we've the board has done this before. I remember explicitly let's, Dan let's, Richardson doing this at yes. least let's, once or twice. Let's get that size that size eight shoe yeah. into the seven <laughs> yeah, yeah. That size, yes. eight, well, that size eight foot into the seven foot <laughs> size seven shoe. That, that's what I'm trying to say. So <laughs> if we're gonna go the route of this variance, I mean we're gonna need to have you officially you know, request uh, you know a variance. So would you like to this evening explore the avenue of requesting a variance from this board? If that will allow us to put the roof on the structure where it is, yes. 
Well, we have we have no guarantees that, that that's the out, what, outcome of the process, but uh, I think you know, as as the chair, that's the that's the closest that we think we can get <laughs> uh, to uh, you know to, to maybe maybe getting there. Um, but the, we the need to discuss. The ordinance is not is not is not clear on this. And this is. I'm sorry. The the, I'm sorry. The ordinance is not clear on this, and so we're trying to bend things to make them fit but you still need to get at least four board members agreeing yes and voting in favor yeah. of what's going to happen but we're trying yeah. to find a path forward um so uh for board members at home and you can see it up here too yeah. the general variance column right so criteria is one through five are what need to be met um and to me some of these seem clear yeses but some of them it's going to be up to the board to figure it out. Okay. Well, I think we just start with number one, and we'll we'll, we'll discuss it, and uh, and see if uh, you know see if it fits, and then we can go on to the next one. Um, so I'll just read it again uh, to help myself anyway. There are unique physical circumstances or conditions, including irregularity, narrowness, or shallowness of parcel size or shape or exceptional topograph topographical or other physical conditions peculiar to the particular property and that unnecessarily hardship due to these conditions are not the circumstances or conditions generally created by the provisions by, uh, of the bylaw in the neighborhood or district in which the property is located. Um, so when I read this, my take is, is that this is more for a variance from, uh, you know, sub, you know, not instances related to maybe this um, situ situ situation. Uh, maybe board members have uh, other other take on this. Number one. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Can you make sure the microphone's in front of you to help the people on um, Zoom as well as the minute taker. Okay. So it does seem to me that the situation why we have. Um, the trash area where it is, mm -hmm. is because of the physical condition of the shape of the land. Oh, okay. So, you know, if we, it's a long, thin um, piece of property, and we have the, the parking spaces on the left as you go in, and then the condos are on the right. Yeah. And as you go toward the back, the, spar the parking area gets more and more narrow. Mm -hmm. So there really isn't another place we could put the trash other than that spot. Mm -hmm. So if that's at all what that's implying, which I think it might be, um, it seems like that could be a yes. Mm -hmm. um, so Go I'm ahead, trying to remember if there's, do I have an image of the full parcel in the staff report? I think you do, yes. Yeah, I think there's from above an aerial view. Yeah, I think there was. Yeah. Well, I know that, no, we don't I know there was uh, maybe website. in the landscaping. Yeah. Yeah. If you go to the landscaping, so page thirteen of the staff report, you yep. can see yep. how the parcel and the parking area narrows to the back, um, and and how it would be difficult for a trash truck, a garbage truck, to get back in there to get to stuff, um, and be able to maneuver. Yeah, it makes sense to me. Um, I'm okay with number one. Any board members have any comment? <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm good with number one as well. Yeah. I mean, I think that uh, uh, the circumstances are such that uh, that we can uh, use number one uh, in this particular instance. Does anyone want to take the lead on number two? <laughs> yeah. oh. I think my read of number two is. Um, the key point here, in my opinion, is uh, the reasonable use of the property. And I think the reasonable use of the property is you're seeking a safer environment for people to get to and from the trash. And so it's, you know, I, I, I see this as, um, too, as being, uh, you know, aligned with uh, what you'd need to achieve uh, work down the checklist. Um, I, I, I would second those comments. And uh, Rob, if it's uh, okay with you, I'll take on number three. Yes, please. And unnecessary hardship has has not been created by the appellant, and uh, clearly that's you have not. 
gone out there and created a hazardous situation. Uh, um, and uh, so, yeah, this is that, that would not uh, be a necessary hardship. Um, has not been created by by you. Do, do you have? You guys can see this right here. Do you have any comments on two and two and three? So unnecessary hardship is not being created. Are you saying that? that I mean, you have not created that. We, we didn't yeah. create this. <laughs> we didn't create this. No, <laughs> well, we did create. That. Well, the unnecessary hardship is that if we have to move it back, then that's, yeah. that's an unnecessary to me because of the cost. I'm thinking, I'm thinking that your safety is more and important than the cost. Safety is the biggest reason that I right? care about it. Mm -hmm. But if if we have to move it, it's you know the, there's another. The, but the safety, zone. the safety is the main concern. The safety yeah. is definitely the main concern. Yeah. No. Well, I don't know if um unnecessary hardship is 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 this intended to only refer to the property owner or also to the adjacent. So I think you have the letter of support from your neighbor as well, saying that this addition of the structure is in fact an improvement for them. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it's that, 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 that comment helps. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Um, so number four. Variance, if authorized, shall not alter the essential character of the neighborhood or district in which the property is located, substantially or permanently impair the lawful use or development of adjacent property, reduce access to renewable energy resources, or be detrimental to the public welfare. Any thoughts? Seems like this one kind of speaks for itself. <laughs> <laughs> and I would yeah. I would agree they uh, uh, it's not going to change the character of the neighborhood and if anything it'll it'll improve the uh, uh, the presentation at uh, one Franklin no. North Franklin. Uh, are there any other non-conforming structures we know of that are you know set back on North Franklin Street? Not sure. I have no idea. I mean, the thing is, what even though. I'm saying this is changing it from a a. Um, all right, hold on. I'm gonna meet you, Joe. Uh, even though I'm saying this is changing it from a fence to a a structure that has a different type of setback requirement. Yeah. It's not like they're building something new. Right. Right. So I don't know. Is looking at other structures on the street is really gonna that that really matters so much i mean it's that we have clearly have support from the neighbors sure sure well i think i will add i just know that you know previous applications we have identified maybe not on this street but in this neighborhood that there are certainly you know buildings that are um you know non-conforming when it comes to the front yard uh you know setback um and so I would check that in the box of uh, you know not altering the essential character of the neighborhood. I don't know well, that. you look at the most of the most of the architecture down there has was certainly built before uh, the zoning regulation was in effect in 1971. Uh, so you know there's a lot of nonconformity with those older buildings. Yeah. Um, all right. So we have to meet all the criteria, I believe. Um, We've gone through thoroughly through four of the five criteria. Um, so the fifth is the applicant is proposing the least deviation possible from these regulations that shall afford relief. Um, I guess maybe I would pose this as a question. You know, do you see any other uh, other ways at which you could fix this? And this is this is this this is. The solution that we felt was the most affordable and also the one that's going to be most effective and not change the really the nature very much so of the appearance yeah and i think when dan spoke too you know we're not talking about putting like a big shed roof and closing it in or anything it's just only as high as it needs to be to provide the slope for the snow to come off 
into the parking lot and still be able to walk in there. So it's just as as small as it can be um, to do to serve the purpose that we're hoping to provide is the safety. And there's plenty of air circulation. Good idea. Yeah, right. We we, we actually no. looked into getting you know, or the vermin that a come with it. building a structure. I mean, not you know buying a structure that, and then we realized, wait, you know, there's going to be garbage in here. So mm -hmm. there's reason to have it very aerated. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, I guess one aspect of this is to make sure we sort of you know dig in is that. Um, so the existing fence, you know, it's a pre-existing non-conformity when it comes to the height. I believe that that's in the staff report. Um, everyone see that? What page that is? Or what's the height of the existing fence? Is it like seven feet? Six feet. Six feet. Six feet, but the front yard under the current regs, it's 4.5. But the structure, right? Yeah. The roof has a 35-foot um max height sure just just if you're starting to go to the height sure no i mean i think what i was getting at is that you know uh is there an angle here where we can maybe reduce the non-conformity of the fence build you know build a roof and whatnot um i'm just throwing it out there for a discussion <laughs> uh to you know an analysis here um that you know i think that the fence can be what four and a half feet but it's the same 10 percent waiver is that right, Meredith? Um, yep, that's right. Now, just uh, hold on, hold on. Uh, yeah, because it's the side and rear yard fences where the board has greater discretion for taller fence. Um, right. That front yard fence back is usually or fence max height is yeah four and a half feet, and then theoretically you could maybe use the ten percent waiver. I guess because fences are mentioned in 3003. <laughs> right. So like five, a five foot can be. Yeah. We've talked, we've dealt with that before. It's just under five feet. Well, and I, and so, I mean, just to talk a little bit, I think that the reason behind that was, you know, was sight lines on the, on the road. And so is, is there a driveway like just on the, what would be the north side of the, there's there's a, a hedge, so I mean there, there's quite a bit. There is a driveway on the right past us, right? Yeah. I, and and I've talked to those neighbors. And yeah. There's a cedar hedge. Is, yeah, there's a large cedar hedge that, that separates us from the neighbors. The actually, the cedar goes kind of right. So it, it I don't know how to say this, but it's it's yeah they're they're really they're close. In the yeah. Is it is so the it? Cedar comes in at the, at the right hand side. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. On the front of the staff report. Yeah. You can see the cedar hedge. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. <clears throat> I mean, I, I think my only my only concern of the existing is you know is you know is potentially a sight line you know for that for that driveway and you know safety of of pulling you know pulling out and the fence in the way but um i'm just throwing that out there for for discussion not that i right that matters or feel either way so board members have any thoughts on that guess not not really yeah no i think with the uh sidewalk and then also the that planted area there there's plenty of room for a car to pull forward and see around yeah. just about anything that's put there. Yeah, yeah you're right. It's it, there's no problem. The way the garden is there, the, the sidewalk, the little garden, you can easily see up north, up uh, North Franklin. Yeah. Plus, there, there will be some structure, obviously, to hold the roof up, but they're mostly going to be some, you know, vertical four by fours. On either end of that wall and something in the middle there won't be a lot of extra um wood there to block you there will be some there wouldn't be a lot there wouldn't be a wall there the, the height of the, the height of the fence would would be the same mm -hmm. okay uh well i guess maybe i'll do a straw poll here we've gone through the five criteria do board members feel that 
the testimony we've had discussing these five constitutes a application for a variance, um, you know, per pertinent to the proposed project. Um, not saying whether we approve it, but do we feel that we have complete information for to, to constitute a request for a variance from the applicant for this project? I think we have as much information as the applicant can possibly give us, and we are now tasked with uh, looking at that need against uh, our ordinance and seeing what we can we can do. And as you say, Rob, um, we can't in advance saying it, say it's approved. We have to go through this process, right, uh, in order to make in order to validate the process. I'll just make a general comment. I'm a newer member of, of the board. I think much of the criteria is um, you know, it's, it's broad. It's open to interpretation by the board members. Yes. But if we're ever discussing the criteria, I think the key point today is, is safety in hazardous weather events. And it would be great if that was addressed more specifically, too. I think that right. would be, if, if there were to be a revision here to criteria, I think that's a worthy that additional criteria point so it's easy to read that in from these uh more general criteria absolutely yeah i think i think catherine's comments are are spot on and uh, uh we should move move forward i'm not seeing anything from nothing anybody online. zoom okay um i guess maybe just out of out of interest, one one last question. Um, how many of the units are like ADA accessible? Any of them in your condo complex? Like um, all of them? Uh, no. Well, so, well, no, we have no. some that are. You mean that would be handicapped accessible yeah. as they are right yeah. now? I don't think any right now. So I, I guess what do you well, I mean, I maybe not handicap accessible, but, you know, accessible to an elderly person where it's, you know, no steps, maybe, you know, going into the into the building one one level or whatnot. There what, what, the condos are, are each two story. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's a there's a, a very small step from the driveway up to each each thing has about a 10 foot long or eight foot long uh, walkway to the front door mm -hmm. um, and then you just step you know, six feet from you know, six inches or six yeah. inches yeah, yeah. Um, into the house so there right. it's it's definitely not it's it's for old people <laughs> yeah some since we're all getting old now and some of them you go right in and then you're into your to the hallway into your kitchen living room mm -hmm. some have steps down like two steps down to go in just mm -hmm. because of the way the land is. Yeah. So like numbers 13 and 14 at the far end, you just walk in and you're right in. Yeah. Mine and yours, when we go in, you have two steps down to get to your to the living room, living the kitchen, room, room. kitchen area. Yeah. But there are none of them that are ADA accessible. But, no you've had, but you've had a number of elderly people living in yeah. these units over the years that yeah. need yeah. to access these Absolutely. trash receptacles. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say around half of us are over sixty. Okay. I don't know what elderly is. But... Yeah. <laughs> it's it gets to... it gets later every year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, Meredith, what are we what are we missing here? Um, if everybody else is good with the variance discussion and other things, the only thing. I would need the board to make sure they don't have questions on is the whole landscaping question. Um, I tried to parse it out um, to that. I think there's enough here, given what the application is for. Um, but I, I I took a little bit of <laughs> a little, I, I don't know, I, I used a little bit of my discretion, which I'm not really supposed to have on how I'm applying the total site landscaping. Um, because I, I didn't, I have some authority to waive in some instances certain application requirements, right? So pieces of paper that get submitted with the application. So I did not require a full landscaping plan for this application um, because the information I was able to pull seemed to show that they had 
you know, at least very, very close to the total light site landscaping requirements, um, especially given that they're not proposing to change the total impervious cover. Um, and there's not really room to add more landscaping on this parcel. But the board would really need to back that conclusion up. So if you feel good with what's in what I've pulled together in the staff report, then great. But if you have questions on that for the for the applicant, um, or if you want to explore the um, potential condition options as to whether or not you would want them to submit a full landscaping plan ahead of the permit if you were to grant a permit you know there's just a little bit there to maybe just make sure you look at and see if you have any questions on i, I just had a question about when you say landscaping are you talking about the the, the like the, the, we have a, a a small garden in front of it mm -hmm. and we have on the other is that what you're talking so about? well it's really everything so when the regulations were rewritten in 2018 um they took a look at landscaping as trees shrubs perennial gardens uh, you know all of that and 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 had a new calculation for how much planted area should be on every parcel um depending on how much impervious cover right how much asphalt gravel buildings are on a parcel um and so the more impervious cover you have, the more landscaping you should have to soften it and to um, you know, keep things cool, screen it, all of it all together. Um, and so I tried to pull from, from Google images and everything, get a count of the different, the hedge you have, the different trees that are on the property, things like that, and tried to come up with a calculation to see where it would lie. Um, and it looks really close to meeting this total site landscaping requirement. It, it wasn't, you know, I didn't go out and actually count everything and measure everything for height to figure out if it was a tall or a medium or a small tree, but I did a guess, um, educated guess on it. Um, so that's just, it's one of those requirements that comes into play every time somebody is making a change to the site when it's something that's more than just a single or two family home on a parcel. Um, but when your condominium, um, development was created it didn't have to meet these standards right so this is really the first time you've come back since we've had these standards that we've had to look at them um and we have quite a, we have a very I, I don't know if you went and look but there's there's a we have a lot of gardens. yeah well and that's yeah. the i pulled in here into the staff report that you have i mean you have the gardens out on um on cross street and then we yep. also have a large garden in, on um we there were we had two real very large trees that were in the front on on uh, North Franklin that we that were getting dangerously large. Mm -hmm. We cut those down, but we replaced them with other trees that mm -hmm. would not grow as large. And uh, I am a, a passionate gardener, and I have done lots and lots of gardening. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah. I tried to pull everything like that that I could into it. So it's just something where the board has to figure out because it's also. You're not building a new structure, right? Not really, you kind of are, but you're not adding to the impervious cover. So um, I guess my question is, do you, I've seen the seen the pictures, you know, the staff report indicates that your landscaping is uh, is probably better than many other <laughs> similar properties, you know, in Montpelier. Would you be amenable to a condition, you know, of the sense that sort of required you to, to, to keep it maintained to oh, that, you know, to that we, level? We do. We do. <laughs> That's what we do. Yeah. So, uh, that would just be a condition within the. Uh, oh yes. Uh, within so, the approval. Because it's, yeah. we're not going to not do that. So. Yeah. So it might be might be have a, a actual landscaping plan filed with so for the, for future zoning permits we actually have that on record or. Um, just because I can't, I don't actually. No, I understand what you're saying. I would I would say uh, we could condition it so that the. Uh, plan could be submitted post construction okay. to give you folks some time to put it together and not requiring the, the services of a license. Yeah, no, 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 uh, just, just, just a, So just, you, you just would, you would want a, just a drawing of the landscape, both in the front and the back. I'm of happy. what's there. Yeah, I'm would, happy to do that. Yeah, no but problem. I like to say this: we love color pencils and an eight and a half by eleven paper, yeah. and just <laughs> show us where things are. And, 
Yeah. yeah. We have go. lots of photos <laughs> too. So awesome. Oh. So tell, so when do when do you want that? Well, it, you'll we'll we'll you're we have to find go. out if the whole thing is actually approved okay. first, which I'm guessing will probably be a deliberative session. Yeah, we will. Every application, you know, in this format, we have sort of discussed after we're in a deliberative session. So we will, mm -hmm. you know, discuss and yeah. whatnot. So let us know what you want. That's we a will. that's a COVID response. We're we're working under COVID rules, uh, and so everything gets adjourned to uh, uh, the special session. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas in uh, before times and hopefully in the times to come, uh, we'll make those decisions tonight. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, no. Um, so what? Are, I'm just wondering: Are we at a point where we are going to tell us our next step? <laughs> we'll 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 get there. We've got to <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> we'll get there. Uh, I'll just do one more. Board members have any other questions or um, a motion or a comment or anything? Um, I, I guess I would give you a few minutes if you have any closing remarks or whatnot. Um, well, this has been a really nice conversation. I appreciate yeah. that. Um, the give and take and, um, and your openness to make this work with our community. It's really nice. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. And, and the fact that the landscaping part came up is extremely important to us. <laughs> Okay. more so than most any other condo association I can imagine but that um yeah it, it's the safety that that's the thing that's driving us crazy and we're getting older and um it's I I, I worry about just even in any time falling you know but especially with the with the ice and snow there um and I'm not the oldest person there <laughs> so yeah Uh, Mr. Chair, I, yes. I would make the motion to close the public hearing on uh, one Franklin's North on one North Franklin Street and mm -hmm. adjourn to deliberative session at the end of our meeting this evening. Motion by Kevin. Second by Joe. Second by Joe. Well, um, and all right, we will go for the vote. So uh, get my list up here. Uh, Kevin, how do you vote? Yes. Michael? Yes. Joe? Yes. Abby? Yes. Catherine? Yes. And myself, Rob, votes yes. That um, motion is approved unanimously, and uh, we will take this up at the deliberative session at the end of our regular meeting. Um, so the next regularly scheduled meeting we have of the DRB is on January 3rd. Nope. We don't have an application for January 3rd, but we weren't aware of that until Let's Friday. Yes. So yes. our next meeting will actually be Tuesday, January 18th. Well, perfect. Yeah. Great. Um, well, we thank you very much for coming out this evening. And, uh, and is there anything else you need from us or we just wait to hear what your decision uh, is. So Meredith can brief you on the exact timeline of, you know, when you'll get a decision. Just one second. Uh, I, I'm, I've got to send right something else. Um, so um, the chances, you know, the deliberative session is going to happen right after this meeting. Okay. Um, and chances are good. There'll be a vote. <laughs> I'll, I'll be in Dutch. Um, but uh, the actual decision will be a written decision that'll need to come out. So there'll be some time on that, especially with the holidays, but we will do our best to get to you, just get you to get it to you as soon as possible, but you will hear from me verbally um, as soon as I can, okay. um, just so you have a sense of, of what to expect. And then obviously we're not gonna do anything till the spring anyway. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, we can't do anything yeah. until the spring, so. No. What? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Can we? What? <laughs> you can't dig holes there to put the roof up. He doesn't need to dig holes. Never mind. Okay. Well, get that... I know nothing about construction. <laughs> you should get that covered as fast as you can. Just gardening. You really should. Well, 
there's so after after a decision comes out there's a 30 day appeal period after that but nobody 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 has been here right to contest it um so you know i'll talk to you but it it's well it's unlikely it's it's yeah. unlikely that there would be anybody who would appeal um thank you so, so much for hearing us out take care and, uh, thank you good luck good have a lovely night so any other business uh we've already talked about push to adjourn yeah uh and i just sent out the um deliberative session link to everybody who's on via zoom Good night. Good, night. Good night. Thank you. Uh, yeah, no other business. Okay. So, if, then I'll make a motion to adjourn uh, for for uh, for this evening. Second. We have motion by Kevin and a second by Catherine. Um, Kevin, how do you vote? Yes. yes. Michael. Yes. Joe. Yes. Abby? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Rob votes yes. We are adjourned unanimously. <laughs> All right. Check your email if it hasn't come in yet, but you should get the link to the deliberative session, and we'll see you there. Yes, are we? So are we?